You do have no idea how Darwinian evolution works. I have a basic idea, that's it. If you're going to question me... Okay, you... let's check your basic idea. What's idea. your basic Natural idea? Natural selection through mutation. That's the basic idea. Natural selection through mutation. Let me just tell you something. I'm not someone who gets angry often. But I'll tell you something that just really pisses me off. When somebody <laughs> tries to make claims and then you shoot down those claims and then as you've beaten them on the floor, they decide to shout something back at you like, huh, what did you say? And then they try and defend themselves. So you're telling me the basic that you understand about Darwinian evolution is this. It's natural selection plus mutation. Well, guess what? That's not even Darwinism. It's natural selection plus random mutations. So what? If it's natural selection plus mutations, guess what it becomes? Epigenetics, orthogenetic evolution. So even though you are slapped on the floor you said no i do understand something i'm just going to tell you this is what i understand two friggin terms mutation and natural selection and you still got it wrong Whew. we'll get to that guy here in a minute well hi there my name is clint laidlaw i'm an evolutionary biologist i study evolutionary ecology and evolution acceptance through teaching and recently i've been engaging with content like this in an attempt to not only correct some common misconceptions about evolutionary biology but also to model a better way of engaging with people that disagree with you all right so we're back to this guy you do have no idea how darwinian evolution works i have a basic idea that's it if you're going to question me okay let's check your basic idea what's idea. your basic natural idea selection through mutation that's the basic idea natural selection through mutation let me just tell you something i'm not someone who gets angry often but i'll tell you something that just really pisses me off when somebody tries to make claims and you shoot down those claims and then as you've beaten them on the floor they decide to shout something back at you like huh what did you say and then they try and defend themselves so you're telling me the basic that you understand about darwinian evolution is this it's natural selection plus mutation well guess what that's not even darwinism it's natural selection plus random mutations so what? if it's natural selection plus mutations guess what it becomes epigenetics orthogenetic evolution so even though you are slapped on the floor you said no i do understand I something i'm just going to tell you this is what i understand two friggin terms mutation wake and wake natural up. selection and you still You're got it wrong Whew, that was aggressive so here we have a discussion between this hostile gentleman and someone who confesses to having a rudimentary understanding of evolution. The hostile gentleman, who is the one who posted this video, tells the other man that he has no idea how Darwinian evolution works. To which the man with the basic understanding of evolution states that his understanding of evolution is limited to the concepts of natural selection through mutation. To which the hostile gentleman responds that that's not even Darwinism. And he clarifies that Darwinism is natural selection plus random mutations. And that natural selection plus mutations is epigenetics or orthogenetic evolution. And then he went on to belittle the man a little more. There is a lot to discuss here. For starters, we already discussed what Darwin understood about evolution earlier. He understood natural selection on heritable variation. He didn't really understand mutation, random or otherwise. So the understanding of this guy who doesn't even claim to understand evolution well is actually a bit more precise than Darwinian evolution. The combination of our understanding of natural selection and genetics is generally called neo-Darwinism. So actually, neither of these guys are actually talking about Darwinian evolution. As for the randomness of mutations, that is a silly place to berate someone, especially if you're incensed that they left the word random out of the use of mutation to describe the role of mutation in evolution. We have no evidence that mutation is a wholly random process. For example, natural selection even acts on the prevalence of mutations in populations, as well as what segments of DNA are most likely to experience mutation. For example, sharks are notorious for not getting cancer. Cancer is caused by mutations to the DNA that cause cells to begin dividing rapidly. And it isn't that sharks don't get cancer, they do, but cancer is very rare in sharks because their mutation rates are very low. The shark body plan is virtual perfection in an environment that historically does not change rapidly. Thus, any change to their genome is generally worse than what was there before. And so the mechanisms that recognize and repair errors in genetic copying are very good. Selection has favored this. And their mutation rates are non-randomly very low. However, for populations that live in rapidly changing environments, low mutation rates generally mean extinction. 
so selection favors repair mechanisms that are nowhere near as good at their jobs as they are in sharks. Additionally, mutations are not equally likely in all regions of the genome. Often less essential regions of the genome experience higher mutation rates than more essential regions. There is no evidence that mutations occur in response to a specific need for a mutation. In fact, this reality is why extinctions occur. But they aren't wholly random. However, our understanding of mutation is that which mutations occur at a given time are random in that while we can predict the likelihood of a mutation and where it is most likely to occur in the genome, we cannot predict exactly which mutation will occur. And I think this is what he was getting at when he became incensed that the word random wasn't used. And I think that the cranky man got so cranky because he wanted to talk about epigenetics and orthogenetic evolution. Because he is saying that natural selection through mutation, if random mutation is not specified, is epigenetics or orthogenetic evolution. And I'll start with orthogenetic evolution, which is the idea that evolution progresses towards some specific objective such as increased complexity. This would require some intelligence or other force directing the genetic change in the population towards this goal. Non-random mutations. Which, if this first guy had said non-random mutations, would likely have been a good synopsis of what he was saying. Of course, he didn't say this. No honest person would assume that this is what you mean when you say mutation. But if you want to act like someone else is an idiot for the purpose of looking smart, you could accuse them of this. That said, you can't accuse him of epigenetics when he fails to specify random mutations because epigenetics do not involve mutations. Epigenetics refers to the fact that environmental factors can, at times, influence which genes are expressed without changing the genome itself, hence no mutation. This is possible because not all genes are expressed at all times and environmental factors can change which genes are expressed at a given time. Not new genes, just genes that were previously unexpressed. This isn't even a form of evolution, and certainly isn't the consequence of non-random mutation. So in a nutshell, this guy is arguing with someone who confesses to not knowing much about evolution. And then, when that guy says something that is essentially true about evolution, the grumpy guy pulls out a couple of terms that the naive guy will definitely not understand and then will use them to bash that guy over the head. In other words, he was just being a jerk. There is a lot more to evolution than just mutation and natural selection, but that's a fine place to start. And this seems to be this guy's MO. I mean, here he is speaking to Aaron Raw who is not naive about evolution, doing roughly the same thing. I'm shocked you're saying this. And you're on YouTube, right. are you drunk or something? So are you gonna you're telling me Darwin, did Darwin write about genetic drift? Darwin didn't know about genetic Exactly. Drift. So Darwin's main idea so was natural evolution. selection. So Darwinian evolution refers only to what Darwin himself proposed. No. Right? The Darwinian no. mechanisms, natural and Wait, selection. Wait, hang on, Aaron. Aaron, so that, you're really embarrassing yourself here. Uh, no, I'm not. Darwin you're saying the primary driver of evolution is genetic drift? Yes. Okay. Do you know what I want you to do? I want you to go down the road to the Royal Society. You've just discovered something amazing because according to them, they believe Darwin was right. Natural selection is the primary driving Darwin, force. Of course, some of them disagree. Darwin but was right. And in his time, he didn't know about genetic drift. Aaron, what? you're saying genetic drift is the primary factor? Yes. You need to write a paper and you need to I challenge all the Darwinists. All right. So here he's accusing Aaron Ra of being drunk or embarrassing himself because he suggests that genetic drift is a primary driver of evolutionary change in populations. Which is true. And keep in mind, uh, this guy is the one posting these videos of himself. It's not like he's being caught making these ignorant and unnecessarily rude statements. Nope. This is the side of his arguments that he wants to present to the world. And in case you're not aware of genetic drift, I'll explain it for a minute. So, alleles are different versions of a gene. Looking at our snakes from before, there is an allele that codes for pigments to attach to the skin and scales, and there is a different allele that codes for those pigments not to attach to the skin and scales, called leucism. So those are alleles. The allele frequency is how prevalent an allele is in the population versus the total number of alleles for a given gene. For example, if I have a population of five snakes, one like this, with two copies of the leucistic alleles, uh, three like this, with two copies of the not leucistic alleles, and one like this, with one copy of each allele, then the allele frequencies would be 7 out of 10, or 0.7 for 
not leucistic, and 3 out of 10, or 0.3, leucistic. If possessing one or the other of these alleles increases the likelihood of reproducing, then the allele frequency for that allele will increase over time. And this is selection. It's not random. But let's say that a fire comes through and kills one of these and one of these. I would have no reason to suspect that their deaths had anything to do with their genes or colorations. Just random chance. But the allele frequencies would change to 5 sixths or 0.83333 repeating and 1 sixth or 0.166666 repeating. If a flood washed these two snakes to a new island where they started a new population, then the allele frequency of the new population would be 0.5 and 0.5. Heck, if these two bred and produced two offspring which, by random chance, both inherited the leucistic allele from this parent, then the allele frequency would change from 0.75 and 0.25 to 1.0 and 0. In none of these cases did the allele frequency change because one of the alleles worked better than the other. It was just random chance. And a change in allele frequency caused by random chance is called genetic drift. And it's extremely common, especially in small populations. But who cares about being right when you can be undeservedly confident and rude? Here you can clearly see Sabor's tactics. Be aggressive in someone's face. Act confident while knowing absolutely nothing of academic value. Quote mine. And most importantly, refuse to demonstrate why what he says is true is true because deep down, he doesn't have any real knowledge of this subject, and he knows it. Hence all this stupid bravado.